In this video, we're going to be taking a look at recreating some of the text effects from the Stranger Things Season 3 announcement trailer. Let's get into it. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump into After Effects now. I'm going to create a new composition, 1920 by 1080 30 frames in 15 seconds is fine. I'm going to title this one main. And we're going to start out with our main text effect. So what I'm going to do is right click, new text, type out a long row of random letters and numbers here. So now I have my row here. This is looking pretty good to me. You can go ahead and double click your layer, come to the character tab. And if you don't see any of these over here, just come up top to window and just make sure that they're checked off for you. Space them out how you want and I'm gonna come up to the align tool and just make sure it's all centered. Select this layer one more time and I'm gonna create a total of 10 rows of these random letters and numbers. So now I have these 10 rows typed out. Just repeat this process one more time so I have at least two of these text layers to work with. I'm gonna turn this off and just do it one more time. So now I have my second text layer typed out here. I'm going to highlight both of these, Control D to duplicate them. And what I'm going to do is swap the top five and bottom five rows with each other on each duplicate that I made. Grab this, make sure I have the text tool selected. Double click this and I'm going to highlight the top five rows of this text layer. Control C to copy. And I'm going to come down to the same text layer, the duplicate. And I'm going to paste it on the bottom five rows here just like that. Now I'm going to come back up to the top, copy the bottom five rows, and then paste them on the top five right here. And now if I turn both of them on, you can see that all we did was swap the top and bottom five. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other text layer that we made a duplicate of. So I'm going to copy the top five. Control C, come down here, paste them in the bottom, come on, paste them right there, and now I'm going to copy the bottom five, come down here, and paste them over the top five, oops, and paste them over the top five. So now if we turn these back on, you can see now these two are different as well. So now we have four different text layers we can work with. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to come two frames forward in the timeline. You can also use the page up and down keys on your keyboard to move frame by frame. I'm going to select all these, hit Control Shift D to split all these layers and I'm going to delete them. And now I can start offsetting each one of these at the end of each other. And now every two frames, you can see that these switch over and you can kind of start to see where this digital glitch effect is going to start to take place. I'm going to select all of these and I'm just going to start duplicating them. I'm going to come to the end here and I'm going to just move these to the end of each sequence here. And I'm just going to do this at least a few times just to give us a base for where we can start this effect out at. I just want to come to the end here. So you can see I did it at least a few times. It's lasting a couple seconds here. And if we need to make it any longer down the road, we can always just come back and extend it if we need to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all these, right click and hit pre-compose. And I'm just going to call this maybe just text for now. And if we play through here, you can see this little digital glitch start to take place. And actually what we can do also is just come to the end, wherever this stops, right here. We can split this composition, delete this, and what we can do is just make a few copies of this and just extend them out. So now we have a longer effect to work with. And I'll just pre-compose all of these and just put text main maybe. Alright, so I'm going to start animating this just a little bit. 
I want to come to the beginning of the timeline. I want to hit P on the keyboard to open up the position properties. I'm going to hit this stopwatch to add a keyframe. And I'm going to bring this up just a bit, not to where it's totally out of frame, maybe just right there. And I'm going to come down about five frames. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to bring this down just a bit, maybe just like that. And now I'm going to go one more frame and reset this to 540, which is center. So you can see it comes in for a few frames and then it snaps into place just like that. So now we can move on to where we start highlighting some words inside of this digital glitch effect. And I maybe want to start it around a second and a half. So what I'm going to do is come back inside of this text composition. I'm going to open this up and maybe make a duplicate of this right here, this top one. And I'm going to stretch it out, bring it right here to where we want it to start at. And now what I can do is right click, pre-compose this, and I'm going to call this one highlight just for now. I'm going to come inside here. I'm going to select this text layer and I can start swapping out some of these words. So maybe right here I can go, oops, make sure it's caps. Let's come down here, have some fun. So now that I have these words placed, I can start adding the highlight behind them. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come up here and grab the pen tool, make sure I don't have the text layer selected, and I'm going to just draw a line behind the first word here. And I'm going to come up here and make sure the fill is turned off, and I'm going to make sure I have a solid stroke color, and I'm going to adjust the width of this stroke. That seems fine to me. And I'm gonna make a total of four copies of this because I have four words I'm gonna be putting inside of this text layer. And for each one of these shape layers, I'm gonna hit P to bring up the position properties and adjust this to where it's covering each word that I have typed out into this text layer. It doesn't have to be too perfect just because it's not gonna be on screen for too long. And by the way, I'm using this fixed sys font right here. And the reason why I have my text and my shape layers is gray color is because I'm gonna be using the free color vibrance plugin from Video Copilot. It's just gonna allow us to create some very easy color changes later on. I'm gonna bring this down. And if you have a word that you have typed out in here that's a little longer or shorter like I do, this one's gonna only be three letters. You can just come back up here and just adjust this hold shift to make sure it's straight and just adjust the size maybe a little bit shorter line it this way so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this text layer up top I'm gonna select it and I'm going to change the text color to black so now you can see that we have this sort of highlighted text right here and what I'm gonna do is come to the beginning of this text layer and I'm gonna select all of my shape layers and hold alt and open brackets to cut it right here at the time header right there. And I'm gonna stretch this out. I'm gonna come back over to our text comp and I'm gonna create a total of four copies of this highlight pre-comp that we have. And I'm gonna create a mask on each one of these to mask out each one of these words. So I'm gonna have my composition selected Hit the pen tool and just draw a tight mask around where we have highlighted. I come down here, do this one. All right, so now I have a mask drawn on each one of these compositions and I'm going to actually highlight all of these and I'm going to cut them to size right where it starts. So now it comes on just like that. So now we know where these actually start at. And now I'm gonna start offsetting these for when I want them to come into frame. So one and a half seconds seems fine for the first. I'm gonna select my second one and maybe bring it a half second up and do the same for each. That doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just testing it out right now. So if we play this through, that seems fine. I'm gonna spread them out just a little bit more and play through here. That seems pretty good. I'm gonna take all of these highlight pre-comps and I'm gonna pre-compose. And I'm gonna call this highlight main, just to try to keep it a little bit organized. I'm gonna actually delete this from this pre-composition. Come over here to the text main 
pre-comp and I'm just going to drag this back down here so now you can see we have this animation here and I think that's looking pretty good so far I'm gonna come back over to our main composition and just play it out just to see how it looks so we have this little snap animation right here and now I'm gonna come over to where our last word pops up right here and I'm gonna wait maybe a half second or so so I'm going to split this layer and delete that side so now this comes in here and then now I know this is when I want my new text to start so what I'm going to do is right click new text so let me turn this off here and let's see I'll type out um, gonna have to make sure I turn my color back on for my text layer this make sure it's caps this year is gonna be good dot 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 and now I'm going to use my character tab right here to just size this and align it how I want so right there is good for me I'm going to right click pre-compose this I'll just leave it like that who cares and now I'm going to make sure I don't have any layers selected so I can create this shape here I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to highlight around here like, see let me delete that I'm gonna make sure I have the stroke turned off this time and I have the fill set to solid now I can draw this shape right here I'm gonna have it placed in the position that I want the animation to start at so if I come back here and if this is gonna end this is where I want this to start select both of these and cut it to where I want it to start and now with the shape layer I'm gonna add a keyframe for the position I'm going to come forward maybe one, two, three, four, five frames, and I'm going to move this down. So if I play it through, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to close that. Now I'm going to select this pre-composition for this text layer right here. So now I'm going to animate a mask with this shape layer to where it looks like it's being typed out here at the end. I'm going to come up here to the pen tool, have this composition selected, and I'm just going to draw a simple mask like that I'm gonna hit M to bring up the mask properties I'm gonna make sure it's set to inverted I'm gonna hit the keyframe for the mask path and I'm gonna come forward that five frames with the shape layer and I can move this mask along with the shape layer so now I'm going to select the shape layer and this composition pre-compose them I'm gonna come inside here so what I'm going to do is after this shape layer is stopped moving, I'm going to select it and split this layer. I'm going to come maybe five to eight more frames down just like this. I'm going to split it one more time, delete that. And now I can start offsetting this just to make it look like it's flashing a bit. I'm going to do this just a few times. I'm not trying to make it perfect here. So now if we play through, that's looking good to me I'm gonna make a copy of it and I'm gonna come back into the main composition and paste it inside of here so now we have this one shape layer to work with I'm going to pre-compose this and just title this shape I'm going to come inside here I'll actually bring this to the beginning drag this out and I'm going to center this as best as I can Actually, let me remove these keyframes from it so now I'm gonna to come to where the shape layer stops blinking in this composition that we have here so I believe it blinks four times one two three four and then when it goes off that final time that's when I want this composition to start what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this along the screen to help create our transition into our last text layer I'm gonna come inside and make a total of five copies of this and now I'm going to just place these kind of in a diagonal line right here it doesn't have to be perfect and one more just try to get it as best as you can it doesn't have to be too perfect all right so I'm gonna come back here and now we have this line or this little dash right here with these shapes that we created and now we're gonna animate this across the screen so when this starts right here I'm going to hit P to bring up position. I'm going to create a keyframe 
and just bring it all the way to the left off screen right here. I'm gonna come forward maybe half a second or so, or I'll just do about a full second. And I will pass this across the screen all the way over to the right side and just see how that looks. I think that's going at a good speed, so I'm just gonna keep that right there. I'm gonna close this, and with this pre-comp where we have this text and shape in here, once this starts animating, I wanna create a mask so that when this passes over it, it disappears and reveals the text layer behind it, the new text layer behind it. So I'm gonna select this pre-composition, come back to the pen tool, and then just draw another mask around our text and I'm gonna hit M to bring up the properties. I'm going to make a keyframe for the mask path and I'm going to scrub forward here and just move this mask as this passes over our text. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And now we can start with our last text that's going to be revealed underneath this. So we'll go ahead, select the text tool, right click new text, and actually come to the end of this. Um, and we will type out maybe just happy new year. I can't really think of anything else to put for this. And then I'm going to size this how I want it. I'm going to right click pre-compose this, leave it like that. And now I'm going to create a mask for this layer. So as this starts animating on, maybe about right, let me see. So right before it starts to pass this text layer, I'll come back up to the pen tool and create a mask right there. But this time I'm going to hit M to bring up the properties and invert it and I will make sure to animate the mask path for this as well. So I'm gonna hit the stopwatch, and as this comes forward, I will just move this a little bit forward again. Move this, and this should be good, just like that. Now let me see how that looks. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. Let's come back and just close this and see how this animation is looking so far. Snaps in. All right, so there it is. We have our base animation finished. Now we just have to start adding some effects on top of all of this. So what I'm gonna do is come to the beginning here and I'm gonna select our main composition, this first text effect that we created. I'm going to come over to our effects and presets and I'm going to search for the CC lens effect. Oops, CC lens. I'm going to drag and drop it on this composition. I'm going to set the size to maybe 160 and I'm going to set the convergence to negative 45. So you can give like this fake rounded TV screen effect going on on the sides here. Maybe I'll change this to 163. Maybe I change that to negative 48. That seems pretty good to me. And now I'm gonna come back to the effects and presets and look for Venetian blinds. I drag that onto this. I'm gonna turn this stopwatch off and turn this to maybe 15%. Let me zoom in here just to see how this is looking. Actually, I'll change it to maybe 13 maybe. That's fine. I'm gonna change the width to about 14 and I'm going to change the feather to about three all right so that seems good and now I'm going to add the color vibrance plugin like I said this is not necessary but it just makes this color adjustment so much easier so color vibrance from video copilot drag that on here I'm going to select this green color but it just makes it so much easier to come back and do any sort of color adjustment that I need and plus it's free so why not I'm gonna come back and search for the effect glow I'm gonna drag that on here I'm gonna change a glow threshold to maybe 45 I'm gonna change the glow radius to maybe 
75. And what I'm going to do for the glow intensity is I'm going to alt click the stopwatch here to bring up this expression property. And I'm going to type in wiggle, oops, wiggle, open parentheses, maybe three comma point three, close parentheses. And if we kind of skim through here, it's gonna add this small flicker to our text. I'm gonna RAM preview this just a bit, just to see how it's looking here. All right, yeah, so I think this is turning out pretty good. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close all these, and I'm going to copy all of these effects, Control C, and I'm just gonna start pasting them on all of my other compositions here. Gonna come up to the shape, paste them on that, and our final text, and paste them on that. I'm gonna go ahead and RAM preview this just to see how it's looking. All right, now I can go ahead and play it through, and I think this is looking really good so far. And now we can start with our glitch effects. So I have a few glitch and noise overlays in my project panel, and I'm gonna start just dragging them in here. So this is gonna be a glitch, and what I'm gonna do is scale this to size. I'm actually gonna hide it because I don't need it to be visible. I right click new adjustment layer, and I'm gonna come back to the effects panel. I'm gonna look for displacement map. I'm gonna drag that onto my adjustment layer. Where it says displacement map layer, I'm gonna change that to my glitch video that I have. So now you can see that this adjustment layer starts being displaced with the screen glitch stock footage that I have. I'm gonna change this maybe to 20 and change the vertical displacement to 15. So now you can see it's glitching out as it's coming into frame right there. And what I want to do is when it snaps into place, maybe a couple frames forward, I'm going to split this. And maybe I'll add a little directional blur. So I'm going to come back up to the effects panel and search for directional blur. Drop that on here. And I'll change the blur length to maybe 10 and change it to about 90 degrees. So now I'll start to make a few duplicates of these where I want some glitches to happen and I'll spread them out through the animation here. So I know for sure that I want the transition from this text composition to this text right here. I'm gonna want that to be a glitch effect. So I'm gonna come to the end of this and to the start of this other text layer. I'm gonna make sure it's right here at the end so now you can see that it's going to start to glitch out right here right before it switches to this next text that we have coming on screen i'm going to come back to my project panel and i have this static here i'm going to bring inside i'm going to scale it to size if i play through here you can see this different static that we have here actually i'm going to cut it right here i'm going to bring it to the beginning and I'm gonna play this for two frames, two or three frames maybe. And I'm going to split it. And now I'm gonna just align this with the different cuts in the adjustment layer that we made. So if we come here to the end of this and maybe change the blending mode to overlay, maybe I'll come and I'll hit T to bring up the opacity properties and I'll bring down the opacity Maybe I'll change it to 45%. I'm gonna play around the blending modes just to see what looks better. Maybe screen looks better for this, but I'll also change the opacity down to maybe 25. So I'll come back over here, I'll change this to screen as well, and I'll change the opacity to 25. Maybe I'll make a duplicate of this to bring it in here, just random and offset this maybe a couple times throughout our animation. And one final thing we'll do is I have this TV noise. I'll actually bring in right here and I'll scale this to size as well. Change the blending mode to screen and I'll actually bring this below any other stock footage that we have here. And I'll maybe turn the opacity down of this as well, maybe to 80 or so. So let's RAM preview this to see how it looks. Now that it's done, let's go ahead and play it through here. And I think that looks pretty good. 
yeah there's a few things like the masking and stuff like that that needs to be tweaked maybe one more thing is I would add some motion blur and if you don't see the motion blur right here you can always just right click columns and do switches and modes and just make sure you have this motion blur on all of your layers like this so yeah overall I think that turned out pretty good I mean I hope it was easy enough to follow along I know I'm not the most organized person but anyway this was really fun to create and if you enjoyed it consider leaving a like and subscribing and I will see you in the next video